السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما أما بعد يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Or you who believe fear Allah as he should be feared and they not accept on the state of Islam May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, bestow upon us the gift to die on a state of Islam. Allahumma ameen, ya rabbal alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, the following ayah after A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnasi ta'muruna bil ma'roofi wa tanhawna anil munkari wa tu'minuna billah. You are the best of the people, the best of the nation that has been brought forth to the humankind, that has been evolved, that has been raised up to the humankind. And raised up for the good of the humankind, for the goodness of the humankind. You enjoy what is 
that is good or the doing of what is good and you forbidden what is evil. So the enjoying and the good and the forbid of the evil. And you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qualified and complimented the ummah, the followers of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be the best of the people, the best of the nation. However, you see that this uh, khayriya, the fact to be preferred or to be at this high level, to be complimented by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, it has a reason. And the reason is not to be preferred just because the person is Muslim. To be someone who's like, you know, in a high position or to be chosen one because, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the special love for the one who is Muslim other than any other person. There's a reason. And that's the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the book. He said that you're enjoying, enjoying good and forbidden evil and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The enjoining of the good, it's a system. It's just not limited to the few actions that you see an evil you want to stop it. It's a system. It's a system that it have the full intention, the sincerity to stop the spreading of the mischief on earth and to spread the justice and to establish the justice and to spread the truth. Therefore, the reason to be chosen one, the reason to be complimented, evolved, and to be the best among everyone else is because of the sincere intention that you put and you make it to be the reason, the cause of your life to seek the goodness for the whole universe around you. And that's the meaning of enjoying good and forbid evil. Unfortunately, many people, they use the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam when you see an evil, stop it. And that hadith, it needs to be regarded within the system of the faith of Islam within the meaning of evil, the meaning of al-ma'roof, what is good? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whoever go against the Prophet sallallahu and he take the way other than the way of the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will cast him in what he has chosen in his, wal-iyadu billah, the doom of the hellfire. Which is mean in this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, who are able to define what is evil and what is good is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And based on that definition, based on the definition of what is just, what is right, what is good, what is evil, that this action or the system is being, you know, established. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us such a thing. So the best of the ummah, yes, the best of the ummah with the sound belief, with the sound vision, of the universe, the sound vision of the reality of this world, the sound vision of the reality of the human being and its journey and the journey of human being on this life. The right knowledge, the high level of morality, the great system of interaction, the great system of establishing the social justice. That's why the follower of the Prophet Sallallahu are the best of the Ummah. Now, the amazing part in the ayah, as many of the scholars, they have a reflection of, on its meaning. We'll mention those meaning, all these reflection and the tafsir from the uh, scholar of tafsir, they do not contradict each other. Actually, they complement the meaning. You enjoy good, you enjoy in good, and you forbid evil. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and you believe in Allah. The question is, when you read it, you say how believing Allah comes after enjoying good and forbidding evil. And the fact is that the beginning and the foundation of such a system start with the believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no believe in Allah, there will not be enjoying good. And if it's happened, if you see people doing good and forbidding evil without the base of the system of the Iman, of the faith of Islam, that is rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the Iman is in the beginning, but in this ayah is being related and mentioned after the action of enjoying good and forbidding evil. And the reason, at the scholar they say, it has many reasons, we just mentioned two of them. The enjoining good of uh, forbidden evil, it is that subhanallah natural feeling, the natural 
uh, let's say action the natural intention within the every believer as the prophet وسلم, said all of you you are like a shepherd you are like you know responsible and everyone is responsible of his responsibility it's like if you are a brother you are responsible to your brother and your sister if you are a father you are responsible to your family if you are a mother you are responsible to your uh, family if you are a head of a, of a business you are responsible on the business and the people who work on you so that action of responsibility that is you know mandatory on every believer that where arouse the meaning of enjoining good and forbidding evil therefore when it comes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said let's be among you minkum minkum not among you few of you all of you that you will be racing to whom he will be establishing better ways to get to the justice and the justice that the believer that they want to have as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligated them is in the whole universe not only in yourself or into your family but this is subhanallah the journey of belief of, of in the way of in the vision of the Islamic faith this is said when you look at all these things you say to yourself what happened to us today are we the best of the ummah obviously not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said tu'minuna billah so what is first the impact of tu'minuna billah after enjoining good and forbidding evil the enjoining good of forbidding evil as a system is to safeguard the system of belief into the community so it becomes like that enjoining good of forbidding evil is like the beat of the heart it's like the life, what preserve life, what give the fuel to this life of this system, which then will preserve and safeguard the iman into the community. Therefore, what tu'minuna billah, it's like if we do not do and do the edification and the establishment of this system, what is going to happen is going to have that iman be weak. And some of you, O oh Muslims, O oh followers of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are going to lose this Iman. The rest is going to be weak. Why? Because there is no this system which is by nature and by the principle of the deen is going to safeguard this Iman into your heart. It's going to safeguard this Iman into the family. It's going to safeguard this Iman into the community. And the other meaning that what tu'minuna billah comes to define what is the measure that you rely on to define what is good and what is bad it is through the iman billah through the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you establish such a system there is an immediate result that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised the ummah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the the favor of succession on earth which is mean that you'll be leading leading people to the good and of course it does not exist today which has come to the conclusion that we have already said that the ummah of today it's in any way to be the best of the people at all so quantum then like look at your first generation they were truly the best of the people the best of the generation the best of the community that ever been evolved to the humankind and alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to help us know that your status of being Muslim does not make you to be a special person but your action which make you to be special which make you to be better than anybody else not better in a way of preference to show your arrogance no better because you are working and acting toward the greatest of the thing for which the whole creation is created which is to establish this whole well-being into the universe which is actually the heart of the ubudi that's the meaning of the servitude to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah said in Surah An-Nur, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah has promised 
the believer among you and those who do good deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will empower them, will give them succession on the earth as he has been, as he has granted it to people before you. And he empowered and helped them to establish and to practice their deen in the, you know, in a safe way, in authority, that they will have it to manage it the way that it pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not scared, not in fear, not be able even to say the word of the truth like in many Muslim countries and so on. قال ولا يبدلنهم من بعد خوفهم أملا and he will replace after the fear that they have security and safety. But as you see in the Muslim world today, we do not have that. So what is the problem? The problem that we cannot reclaim or claim a statue of being the best of the nation when we do not have the element really, because this is not limited. To someone who's born Muslim, everyone who come to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Muslim. Everyone who speaks Arabic is an Arab. And everyone who say la ilaha illallah is admitted in the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now if you look at our reality and go back a few centuries, the, some of the scholars by doing this study, they said, subhanAllah, there is something happened starting from the 17th century, which is almost the 10th century Hijri. And even before that, two centuries before that, Ibn Khaldun, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his famous book, Al-Muqaddama, and he wrote a big book of history, he was given the first, what they call today, the philosophy of history. He was complaining about the Ummah on his time, how, subhanAllah, that fervor, that, uh, that enthusiasm toward civilization, toward knowledge, it's been, subhanAllah, find like kind of a feebleness in it, is weakening. And he's saying like, there is no that drive for people to create life, to build. And he's from that time, he was complaining in a way like criticizing that. But after two centuries, it becomes like a nature, kind of something, subhanAllah, into the life of the Muslim. And the problem that what happened as sentiment that becomes like a feeling and that feeling that being inherited to the next generation and we're part of that generation who inherited those feelings and these feelings subhanallah they can put a distortion into the system of the thinking of a believer of a muslim these two feelings as some of the scholars described it the first feeling it's like and a sentiment of the whole ummah, the position or the stand of the whole ummah toward his deen is becoming weak and weaker. The second one is the stance or the position of the ummah toward other nation is also degrading. And this is, subhanAllah, has an impact kind of uh, a deception, a feeling of, uh, of bitterness, that uh, into the last century especially because it went centuries but in the last century these two sentiments they merged together to create something subhanallah is like the muslim becoming instead of conveying the message on leading to show the goodness he became blindly imitating and the problem in the imitation is like they subhanallah deserted the fact how they look at it from the way of Allah to look at it from a way of materialism, purely materialism, to the point that most of the Muslims today, they practice a materialistic Islam, which is means, subhanAllah, it becomes like in their life, it's like everybody else. They live the life that everybody else is living. There is no any factor of Iman. There is no into their dreams, most of them, something that is related with their purpose of life. When we talk about the Jannah, even the Jannah becomes, we look at it from a materialistic point of view. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us rizq. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us, you know, be successful in our study. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be successful in our business. To ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us and grant us a high, great career. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and when we think about the Jannah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but hereafter, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people they ask about Hur al Ain, and the people they ask about the Jannah and things, and all subhanAllah is like material gain. Where is the Iman? Where is the trust? Where is the ethic? Where is the morality? SubhanAllah, things change. So we are looking 
at this life from an eye, a materialistic eye. And this is, subhanAllah, as an impact of what happened into the past generation. But we're saying, subhanAllah, our new generation seeing such a thing, and alhamdulillah that we have the Qur'an to go back to. Because uh, the people, when they define such a thing and, and the problem that when we were talking last week about, you know, the understanding of our reality as a way to implement the deen. But there is people, they do not need, actually, they don't feel that they need to do such a thing. Why? Because they feel that the reality is being explained to them. They feel that the reality, they are comfortable. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, those people who feel comfortable in this dunya, they feel like, you know, this is great. So they don't seek something else. They feel that everything is normal, everything is great, everything, alhamdulillah, you know, paying the bills, the dreams is gone, everything. So subhanAllah, Allah sent us trial after a trial, but yet when we recover from the trial, we come back to that materialistic, you know, uh, vision, materialistic view, materialistic point or way of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, alhamdulillah, and... Insha'Allah, all of you, you are sincere, true believers. You ask our yourself, everyone, how can we rebuild that quality to join the first generation to be the best of the people? The best of the people not to show off on others, but the best of the people in serving the good for the other people. Kuntum khayr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you were and you still you are. Not you were, and that we're going to regret it. You still you are, because the reason or the condition to be the best of the people, still you have it in your hand. So, what should we do? What we are missing? As I said, people, they look at their... We, we have, most of the Muslims today, they live a double life, a parallel life. When they talk about the deen, is Ramadan, is Hajj, is things. When we talk about life, you're talking about the science, how the science they think, what the science they said. So it's like the reference into their life, the revelation into their life, the dunya we life is science. The revelation into their deen life is the Quran. But the Quran, subhanAllah, does not cross the bridge to come to their life. And this is what the progressist people or the secular from among the Muslim are calling and really conveying this message. And unfortunately, it really spread all over, as I have mentioned, you know, part of it last time. For a sincere believer, we have the Qur'an. We know what is going to happen. How can we help ourselves and help our generation to get rid of this sentiment that we have weakness toward other, that we have weakness into our deen? You have it's the key into your hand to regain back your deen. But how can we do that? If there is two elements, if you think about them. The first element is how much you trust Allah. The second element is the necessity to revive ethics and morality in our, subhanAllah, in our action, in our behavior, in our transactions. How that? The first thing, you trust in Allah, you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you just read back the Quran, and what Allah is telling you in the Qur'an is the truth, is the ultimate truth. Whatever contradicts from what Allah is saying in what you have learned, then throw, please reject what it contradicts your book because Allah is telling you the truth. And that's it, the Iman. That's when we say the building of the system starts with the Iman. Do you really to love Allah? If you truly love Allah, if you truly Believe in Allah, then trust what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you. I'll give you just a simple example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whoever fear Allah, whoever show piety, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make a way for him or her from, you know, whatever they have in adversity, Allah make a way out for them. And he provide them from way that you will not expect. So imagine then the provision, Allah telling you in the Quran is related to your taqwa. This joyful life that everyone is looking for is relating to your piety, not on how much money you do. 
So you see, your trust in Allah make you to regulate your journey, make you to, subhanAllah, reform back your thinking. It's not about the great career that you need to do to give you joy life. It's about your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is going to help you to help others have a great life. And the second one, it is to revive the akhlaq. Because the vision today, our dreams is based on materialistic gains. But if you make your dreams based on ethic of akhlaq, if you are, Masha'Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow on you the gift to be to have a great position or to have, Masha'Allah, being someone who has a good, uh, you know, skills, being a doctor, make your, do not make your priority is the income. Make your priority is what you have as skills to help people. The same for the engineering, for the same for, for any of the skills that you have. Your purpose will be defined by the akhlaq, by your morality, by your ethics, which defined for you by your faith. That's how, subhanAllah, will change. That's how you became the best of the people. Not the best of the people because you have more money or you have more gains, materialistic things. Not the best of the people, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, because you have that substance of the Iman. And you have that trust in Allah. And if you do have such a trust in Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless everything you do. Therefore, whatever thing you do, you're going to do it for a great purpose, not for a small purpose. The small purpose, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it to you, even though without that action, because Allah is the provider. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's a nafi'u wa daru. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the one who gave you life, and he's going, going to take your life. Just an example or two examples from our Salaf, to see how this Iman, how made them to be great people. They trust in Allah, and they deal and act into great moral and great akhlaq. When Sa'd ibn Abi al-Waqas sent part of the, of the, it was a lot of jewelry, you know, that they took from Kisra, the emperor of, of Persia. And he sent, you know, the part of Baytul Mal al Muslimin, which is going to be to the home of finance of the Muslim. Imagine from the part which is now, you know, the, the side of Iraq and Iran to going back to Medina. To the point that someone of the Sahaba he had, he was carrying a big load of gold and diamonds and subhanAllah, things that you cannot imagine. When he get to Medina and he gave the two big bags or the bags to the to the one who go to, to the receiver he was kind of joking with them so you, you didn't take anything he gets so mad tell them wallahi if i have that intention you will not have seen these bags but my heart is with allah what allah is preparing for us is greater than this you know passing enjoyment of this worldly life and Umar, when he saw such a thing, he saw like the crown of Kisra in front of him. Or like, he said, he said, Subhanallah. He said something amazing. Qala inna qawman addu hadha la umana. A people who brought this, they are truly trustworthy. This is the akhlaq. This is the iman. This is why they were the best of the people. Then Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he said to Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, he said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, innaka qad ta'affafta fa'affat ra'iyyatuk. You've been virtuous, you've been upright, therefore your subjects are upright. And you have been crooked, if you were being crooked, then all your subjects will be crooked. And I finish with this story. One of the great scholars, he gives subhanAllah for a long day his lectures. Between lecture and lecture, he sit and he stretch his legs just to rest. At the time when he was stretching his leg, the prince or the, the sultan came in the masjid with all his soldiers. And everybody, when they saw the sultan, subhanAllah, you know, they scared and they stood up and everybody like a greeting, except that scholar, he sat still, you know, and stretching his legs. The Sultan looked, he didn't want to say anything. When he left, he was so mad, he said, you'll see what I'm going to do to this scholar. 
He didn't respect me. So the people, the, the people around him, they said, don't do that. You might open, you know, something, a problem. So don't do it. This person, he's loved by, by everyone. But try to delude them with money. Send them money. And you'll see. With money, you can buy everything. So he sent them money with the messenger. And he came in front of his student. He said, Mawlana Sultan, he's sending you this money. He told them, keep your money. Count it, keep it, and take it back to the Sultan. Indeed, the one who stretched his leg, he will not stretch his hand. And that's it, the Izzah. Those are the Akhlaq. That's what we have missed to make us in the sight of Allah, not in the sight of the people, the best of the people. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا وَالْغَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ بسم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى أما بعد Dear brother, respected sisters It is a long story of, let's say, deceptions But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not call you accountable of, on what other or your forefathers or the people generation before you they have done He will call you accountable for your action and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you to be the best of the people. As again, the best of the people, to be the best for the people in doing good. That's the meaning of it. And by trusting Allah in what you read is the truth, is not what you have learned, is not what you get used to, is what you read is the truth. Fight, it's a fight inside you to help build those meaning those vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truth within yourself to look at the universe the way that Allah described it to look at yourself that you are honored that you are dignified the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you to look at this life as is this life is going to end and subhanallah will death will come to you at any time without you knowing as we have mentioned in the halaqa on Wednesday that the angel of death in the author will come and watch and look at your face every day. So you don't know when he's going to take your soul. And even if you live a thousand years, it's going to be very short when you come to the, compared to the day of judgment. For the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to revive, to revive the soul of ethic, of morality into our action, so it is not only to be kind, because that kindness, it might, subhanAllah, not serve you. Why? Because you didn't have to be like, you didn't link it with your faith. Therefore, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, I was sent only, I was only sent to complete, to fulfill the greatness of morality. And this is the meaning of it. You make your objective in every action is that khuluq. That thing that you want to link it to your hereafter, to link it to how you can contribute in the goodness of this whole earth and this whole universe. That's the akhlaq. And these two elements will give you something great. Will give you, as we have seen with this scholar that I have mentioned in his story, give you al izza al izza too is the honor, is the pride. And when we have this honor and this pride, you will be a rich person, rich into your heart, rich into your being, and dependent, happy, and you really enjoy what is the meaning of life. And this is the, this is the, make you to the, be the best of the humankind. It's not me who telling you this, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Surah al bayyina Those who believed and do righteous deeds, they are the best of the creation. Allah called you the best of the creation because you're doing so, you're not only serving human beings, you are serving the air around you. You are serving the ground that you are walking on. You are serving the trees around you. You are serving every creature around you because your action of the good is bringing, subhanAllah, that vibe of life needed by the whole environment around you. This is what the Prophet ﷺ taught us. 
by your tasbih, by you walking in peace, by serving the good in the sake of Allah, in the way of Allah, that you will be, subhanAllah, the best. And you're not, you, don't, you don't need to be in the, in the news, you don't need to be famous in the, in the magazine or in the social media, or you have like thousands or millions of followers, because you will have Allah watching over you. You will have the angel making dua for you. You will be famous among the whole dwellers of the heaven. Even though nobody might know, not know you here, but Allah knows you. And that's, dear brother, respect and sister, the true gain. That the gain, when you bring it to other people who love the material, who really live for this life, they will not understand it. And that's why Allah made us to be the best of the people if we truly enjoy good, forbidden evil, and we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to build the izzah in our heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us toward increasing and strengthening our trust in Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala improve our behavior. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make to be our suluk, to be based on the akhlaq, on the morality of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the right way. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make dear to our heart the love of iman. And make dear to our heart every action that keep us close and get us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma rabbana ghfil lana dhunubana ajma'een. Allahumma thabbitna rabbana ala siratika al-mustakheem. Allahumma habbib ila إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين واجعلنا من عبادك الراشدين المتوكلين يا كريم يا رحمن يا رحيم وصل اللهم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين واقم الصلاة يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الله أكبر